Michael Andrews had everything at least to the outside world, a respected detective lauded for his dedication and discipline, a man who had climbed the ranks, earning the trust of his peers and the respect of his community. But most importantly he had a family, his wife Emma and their two young children. Emma had been by his side long before the badge, through every long night, every missed celebration and every sacrifice. She was the glue that kept their family together. To her, Michael was more than just a detective. He was a husband, a father, a man who had vowed to always prioritize them. However, over time, the demands of his job began to draw him away. The late night calls, the endless paperwork, the pressures of law enforcement, it all began to take a toll on him. He no longer came home with a smile, eager to embrace his family. Those days were fading. Emma noticed the change. She observed the weight in his eyes, the slump of his shoulders. He was home less often and even when present he seemed distant. She attempted patience, reminding herself of the life they had chosen together. But no matter how hard she tried to bridge the gap, he seemed increasingly distant with each day. Then there was Jason Bennett, a young driven officer just out of training, eager to prove his worth. Coming from a tough neighborhood, Jason had witnessed his share of struggles. The violence, the poverty. He saw the police force as his way out. Being partnered with Michael seemed like destiny. To Jason, Michael was more than just a partner. He was a mentor, a role model, someone who had faced adversity and emerged stronger. Jason admired him, respected him. Initially, it was simply admiration the type a rookie might have for a seasoned mentor. But as they spent more time together, this admiration started to evolve into something deeper. Night after night, shift after shift, Michael and Jason were immersed in the same intense world, enduring long hours and sharing profound experiences. This proximity forged a connection that transcended the professional realm. Michael found solace in Jason's company. He felt a level of understanding he hadn't experienced in years. Their bond deepened through casual chats during patrols and moments of vulnerability within the confines of the squad car. Michael hadn't intended for it, hadn't sought it out, but amidst the quiet when the rest of the world seemed distant, something else began to blossom something inexplicable even to Michael himself. Then one night on a routine patrol both were in the car talking to pass the time. Michael's gaze was fixed on Jason's, their eyes locked. The feelings that had been simmering due to their daily interactions became undeniable, and a kiss ensued. The boundary was crossed. What started as innocent conversation escalated into something more. A touch, a lingering glance. Michael was immediately consumed by guilt. This was not who he was. He cherished his wife, his family, Yet the attraction was overpowering. He convinced himself it was a mistake, a one-off event, but deep down he knew it was more. For Jason, however, it wasn't a mistake. To him, this was the start of something genuine, something he had unconsciously longed for. His perception of Michael shifted. Prolonged stares, subtle touches. It was no longer mere admiration. It had morphed into something much deeper, far more perilous. Michael struggled to maintain control. He reassured himself it meant nothing but the guilt tormented him, and still, he found himself unable to distance himself. The affair persisted, clandestine and concealed, yet its impact was becoming evident. Michael grew detached, distracted at home. Emma, always understanding, endeavored to comprehend, yet the fractures in their relationship deepened. For Jason, the moment spent with Michael meant everything. He had never experienced such intense emotions before. He began to observe Michael more intently, yearning for their next private moment. His obsession intensified, though Michael might not have seen it or perhaps chose not to. Jason's emotions began to skew his perception of reality and fantasy. In his eyes what they had was real. But to Jason, the complexities didn't matter. He was prepared to do whatever it took to maintain their connection. As Michael's guilt compelled him to pull away, Jason's obsession only intensified. Late night shifts morphed into prolonged late night conversations. What began as camaraderie had transformed into a clandestine relationship threatening to unravel all that Michael cherished. With the increasing weight of his guilt, Jason sank further into his fixation, unwilling and unable to detach. Home had always been Michael's sanctuary, a haven where the external world ceased to exist, where he could remove his badge and set aside the burdens of duty. But now, that sanctuary was slipping away. Emma sensed it. The gap between them wasn't merely physical, it was emotional. Initially, the signs were subtle. Extended work hours once justified by his demanding role, missed family meals, unkept promises to their children. She rationalized these as the toll of life married to a detective, yet she couldn't shake the feeling that a fundamental shift had occurred. Michael was not just preoccupied, he was aloof. When he did return home, he was reticent, his gaze distant his thoughts seemingly far away. Emma endeavored to connect with him, questioning if all was well, if work was overly stressful. He offered a fleeting smile and reassured her it was merely job pressure. She yearned to believe him, but the reality was increasingly hard to dismiss. The man she had married seemed transformed, altered in indescribable ways. Nights that were once lively with dialogue and laughter had become oppressively silent, and within that silence, 
Emma's suspicions deepened. Michael, meanwhile, was increasingly ensnared by his dual existence. His bond with Jason had deepened, and what had started as a fleeting affair had evolved into a more demanding relationship, one that consumed his time, energy, and emotions. It was becoming difficult to keep his personal and professional lives separate. The lines between them were fading. The affair was no longer merely a concealed fact. It was influencing their performance at work. There was palpable tension between them, visible to others, though no one confronted it. During their shifts, Michael found his attention wavering, his concentration breaking at crucial times. He longed for their solitary moments, but such opportunities were diminishing, becoming ever more transient. One evening, amidst a critical emergency call, a situation where every second counted, their relationship nearly led to disaster. Michael hesitated, his thoughts preoccupied not with the task at hand but with the mounting guilt. His momentary pause nearly resulted in a tragedy, and it was then that Michael grasped the severity of their situation. Emma, on the other hand, could no longer overlook the accumulating evidence. The unanswered calls, the fabricated explanations, the detachment in his demeanor. Then came the night that altered everything. Michael had told Emma he was on a late shift again, working until morning. But something didn't feel right to her. It was more than intuition. There was a look in his eyes when he left that night, something that compelled her to act. She called the station asking for her husband but the response she received sent a shiver down her spine. He wasn't there. He hadn't been scheduled to work that night at all. All the suspicions she had been suppressing, all the doubts she had pushed aside, overwhelmed her in that moment. When Michael returned the next morning looking worn and disheveled, Emma was waiting. She didn't raise her voice or make accusations. She simply asked where he had been. Caught off guard, Michael muttered something about a last-minute emergency he couldn't ignore. But Emma already knew the truth. She revealed that she had called the station, that they had confirmed he hadn't been on duty. Michael froze. The lie deepened the already stifling atmosphere between them. At first, he tried to deny it, his voice rising in defensiveness. What are you implying, Emma? Do you think I'm cheating on you? His words resonated through the house. But Emma remained composed. She didn't need to confront him verbally. The truth was evident in the silence that ensued. She turned and walked upstairs, leaving Michael alone with his remorse. In that quiet, the gravity of his actions fully dawned on him. The woman who had been his anchor was drifting away, and it was his own doing. Michael knew it was time to end the facade. He couldn't sustain this double life any longer. The affair had already cost him too much. His peace, his home, his marriage. With trembling hands he picked up the phone and called Jason. When Jason answered, Michael's voice was subdued, nearly broken. He declared it was over, that their relationship had to cease. It wasn't just compromising his job, it was devastating his life, his marriage, his family. He couldn't continue. But for Jason, Michael's words were not merely a conclusion. They felt like abandonment, a betrayal. Michael's voice wavered, but Jason's response was firm, cold. You think you can just walk away from this? He challenged. You think you can switch it off as if it never happened? Michael attempted to explain to make Jason understand but Jason refused to listen. For Jason this wasn't merely a fling, it wasn't something to be dismissed with a phone call. For him it was everything and now it was unraveling. Michael ended the call, thinking it was finally over, that he could leave the past behind and mend the rifts within his family. However, what Michael didn't realize was that for Jason, the resolution was far from reached. As Michael attempted to move on, to piece together the fragments of his life that had fractured. He remained oblivious to the storm that was brewing. The phone call that was meant to conclude everything or so Michael believed. He had made his choice, severed ties with Jason and committed to restoring his marriage. But on the other side of that call, Jason was far from ready to let go. Jason's world had just collapsed. What began as admiration had morphed into something perilously intense, with Michael at its core. Michael had become the anchor in Jason's turbulent life, offering something deeply personal, and now Michael was attempting to withdraw it completely. When Michael declared their affair over, Jason's initial reaction was one of intense fury and feelings of betrayal. You initiated this, he uttered, his voice quaking with rage. You can't just abandon it. You don't have the right to dictate when this ends. For Jason, the idea that Michael could unilaterally close the chapter on what they had cultivated was unfathomable. The bond they had established, the emotions they had fostered, weren't things Jason could simply turn off. From that point forward, Michael became the focal point of Jason's fixation. He couldn't relinquish his hold. Wherever Michael went, Jason was there, unexpectedly appearing at the station, lingering near his car, seeking any opportunity to converse. But Michael pulled away, maintaining distance, evading eye contact, steering clear of dialogue. This only served to inflame Jason's resentment further. Jason's obsession intensified. He started appearing outside Michael's house late at night, lurking in the shadows, observing. He knew where Michael lived, where his family slept. He was familiar with the nuances of Michael's daily routines, 
and now he was exploiting this knowledge to get closer. Michael, oblivious to the extent of Jason's determination, tried to move on, to concentrate on his family. However, Jason was not ready to release his hold. Michael found it increasingly difficult to perform his duties. He sensed Jason's presence constantly, at the station, during shifts, and even at home. It felt like he was being smothered. Desperate for some respite, he approached his superior, requesting a shift change, anything to create distance between himself and Jason. For a moment, Michael thought it might succeed. He might finally regain some breathing room. But the adjustment in shifts only aggravated the situation. Jason discovered the change and his anger erupted. To him, this was Michael's attempt to exclude him, to prioritize his family over their connection. In Jason's view there was one culprit, Emma. Jason began planning meticulously with a cold, calculated approach. He was well versed in Michael's routines, knew exactly when he would be at home and when he wouldn't. His access to police resources and insider information provided the perfect cover to execute his plan without arousing suspicion. It wasn't solely about eliminating Emma, it was about orchestrating an event that would appear as a random act of violence, perhaps a burglary gone awry. He started shadowing Emma, learning her daily patterns, pinpointing the time she would be alone at home. He familiarized himself with the layout of their house understanding how to enter and exit unseen. The plan was straightforward. Choose the opportune moment, stage a robbery, and remove her from the equation. Jason was convinced it would be simple. He believed that once Emma was out of the picture, Michael would inevitably return to him. What Jason failed to foresee was that his actions would trigger a series of events leading to mutual destruction. As Michael continued to pull away, oblivious to the impending disaster, Jason set his scheme in motion. The night was quiet. Michael was patrolling the urban streets, unaware that his personal world was on the brink of ruin. Back at home, Emma was alone with the children, the house silent, the evening routine undisturbed. But lurking outside was a looming threat. Jason had everything planned to the last detail. He knew precisely when to make his move. Under the veil of night, he approached the house, moving silently. The children were safely upstairs, oblivious to the unfolding horror. His focus was solely on Emma. He breached the house, simulating a break-in, but his intentions were far more sinister. As he confronted Emma in the living room, Startled by the intrusion, she had no time to respond. A gunshot broke the quiet, executed with chilling precision. Emma was the sole target, and the children were left unharmed, witnesses to a horror they could never comprehend. Hours later, Michael's phone rang. It was the kind of call no officer ever hopes to receive. There had been a reported burglary at his home. He sped back, his heart racing, his mind in turmoil, but nothing could have braced him for the scene that awaited. Emma was gone. The woman who had supported him loved him through all adversities was now lying lifeless on the floor. The children were unharmed, but the irreversible harm had been inflicted. His wife, the one individual he had endeavored to shield, had been taken from him in the most brutal manner. As the initial shock began to wane, the investigation ensued. The crime scene seemed off, the house appeared undisturbed, personal belongings intact. There were no indications of a struggle, no logical explanation for a robbery to culminate in such a manner. Emma was the sole casualty. Questions emerged. Why would an intruder enter, steal nothing, and fatally shoot an unarmed woman? This was no random act of violence. It was unmistakably targeted. As the scene was scrutinized, suspicions mounted. This was not merely a robbery, it was something far more sinister. Michael stood devastated, his life fragmented, as the detectives conducted their investigation. The truth was gradually surfacing, though he was not yet ready to confront it. He couldn't bear it, not with Emma's lifeless form before him. But what he remained unaware of, what no one yet realized, was that the architect of his profound loss was closer than anyone could have imagined. As the investigation intensified, the real inquiries were just beginning to unfold. The initial shock of Emma's death yielded to an onslaught of questions. The detectives sensed the discrepancy. The crime scene was excessively pristine for what was purported to be a random robbery. As the investigation delved deeper, the evidence began to reveal its secrets. The bullet extracted from Emma's body was distinctive, it was the type issued to law enforcement. This crucial piece of evidence pivoted the focus of the inquiry. The suspect pool, once broad, now tightened to those within the police force, indicating a betrayal from within their own ranks. Michael, overwhelmed by his grief, was compelled to observe as the investigation shifted its scrutiny towards his colleague. Yet, in the solitude of his reflection, a nagging doubt took root. The guilt that had tormented him for weeks suddenly morphed into a horrifying realization. Michael began to recall the messages, the veiled threats, Jason's vehement declarations. You'll regret choosing her over me. His hands shook as he remembered how Jason had started appearing uninvited, lingering near his home. The clues began to assemble into a scenario Michael had never allowed himself to consider. He could no longer contain it. Driven by a need for justice and truth, 
Michael took a drastic step. He approached his superiors, surrendered his badge and gun, and confessed to the affair. He disclosed everything about Jason. The fixation, the threats, the messages that depicted a man obsessed, unwilling to relinquish his hold at any cost. The focus of the investigation swiftly shifted towards Jason, and under the mounting pressure, his facade began to crumble. His alibi, previously solid, started to show cracks. Surveillance footage from nearby security cameras captured him near Michael's home on the night of the tragedy. The truth was gradually coming to light, and the net was tightening. Soon, Jason would have to confront the repercussions of his deeds. The arrest was swift. The evidence was incontrovertible. Ballistics, messages, and camera footage unequivocally implicated Jason. The investigation had meticulously assembled the truth, and it was undeniable. Jason had masterminded Emma's murder. He faced charges of first-degree murder, and escape from the legal repercussions was impossible. The trial commenced, filling the courtroom with palpable tension. The prosecution methodically laid out the case, exposing the clandestine affair between Jason and Michael, Jason's escalating obsession, and his deliberate scheme to eliminate Emma. They depicted Jason as a man overwhelmed by jealousy, prepared to commit any act to reclaim Michael, even murder. Then it was Michael's turn to testify. He stood before the jury, a man shattered by guilt, haunted by the affair that precipitated the catastrophe. His voice quivered as he detailed how his decisions had fractured his family, how he had been blind to the impending peril until it was irrevocably late. He talked about his deep affection for Emma, the remorse that now burdened him, and the anguish of losing her due to his misjudgments. The courtroom fell silent as Michael concluded, his statements resonating deeply. His testimony touched many, yet it could not alter the past, nor could it revive Emma. The verdict was predictable and justice was delivered. But for Michael, the true penalty was the awareness that his actions had directly led to this tragedy. Jason was found guilty of murder, his destiny sealed by the conclusive evidence. Although the court deemed justice served, for Michael, the punishment would endure indefinite. The guilt was overwhelming. His badge, once a symbol of pride, now symbolized the grave errors that had dismantled his family. Overcome by this burden, Michael resigned from the police force, unable to perpetuate in a role that constantly reminded him of the devastating consequences of his actions. The affair, the deceit, the betrayal, all had culminated in this profound loss, the loss of the woman he had once sworn to protect. In the end, deceit led to destruction. If only Michael had been truthful with himself, with Emma, and with those around him, perhaps this catastrophe could have been averted. But obsession, Jason's compulsion to dominate, Michael's inability to sever ties, had propelled them both to the edge and the toll was exacted in blood. This narrative serves as a caution about the perils of concealed lives, the falsehoods we convince ourselves of, and those we tell our loved ones. Betrayal, once initiated, carries repercussions that extend far beyond what anyone might anticipate. Facing the truth may be harrowing but ultimately, it is the only path to avert ruin. For when deceit intertwines with obsession, the cost is invariably exorbitant. Please subscribe to this channel and join us next time as we delve into the next chapter in the lives of those who thought they could mask the truth but failed.